Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. Okay, it's Friday, June 14th. I'm recording this a day early because Saturday is going to be a busy day. So this is going up for Sunday, June 16th. Um, it's okay. It's kind of a timeless one anyways. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, a week or two ago, was talking with oil executives and saying if that if they gave him a billion dollars, because nice round number, you know, to uh, for his campaign, he would lift all sorts of environmental regulations, allowing them to drill, 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 baby. And um, apparently, at least some of these oil executives went back and the oil companies started coming up with a list of things they would like to see in uh, executive orders from President Trump should he be elected as the 47th president of the United States. Additionally, he just had a meeting with approximately 80 CEOs, including Tim Cook of Apple, amongst others, where he basically promised them if uh, he had their backing that he would deregulate all sorts of businesses and things along. And he's going uh, to deregulate businesses basically so they can make more money. Now, uh, he also said he was going to lower the... I should get the story up here so that I can uh, give it all its glory here. Um, Trump said if he's returned to the he'll cut taxes, including income taxes, and bring back the same economic policies he enacted during his first term. We're going to give you more of the same for the next four years. And he said he wanted to bring the um, corporate tax rate down from 21% to 20%. Um, it's funny, the, the article I have over here with CNBC is not exactly uh, uh, biased as far as that goes. Um, but uh, the, on Morning Joe, um, they asked where he came up with the number of 20%, or somebody was there, asked Trump how he came up with the number of 20%, and he basically said, oh, it's a round number. So, you know, that 1% decrease, that's really going to get those companies to uh, really vote for him here. He's also saying we're going to eliminate taxes on workers' tips. Uh, he said that tip workers are going to be really excited by that, and that prompted laughter from the corporate leaders. But I'm not exactly sure why they're laughing. Is it because nobody, would, nobody who wouldn't want to not have their tips uh, taxed? I'm not sure. Um, it is of interest that um, some of the folks that were in the meeting said, you know, uh, including some that would be very pro-Trump, went in the meeting kind of pro-Trump and left the meeting kind of like scratching their head, like, what did we just suffer through there? Because they, it was pointed out that he couldn't complete a sentence. He couldn't complete a train of thought. He was just rambling like he does. Now, Executives, especially CEOs, they have this tendency to get into executive speak. They like to speak in three to four sentences and complete a thought. Uh, unlike me, <laughs> where I ramble on and on and on, they don't want to hear from people like me. I don't get to the point. I give too much background information, don't get to the point. They don't like that. Trump is even worse than I am, because he doesn't ever make the point. Hell, he doesn't even finish the sentence. So I think for these CEOs, they're just sort of seeing, oh my, what's going on here? Um, the other thing is, talk about quid pro quoing, huh? You know, you're telling oil executives, give me a billion dollars and I'm going to cut regulations. That sounds like a quid pro quo. <laughs> telling these CEOs, I'm going to deregulate everything. You know, give me your support. That's, that's, that's moving beyond a campaign promise. <laughs> and it's getting down into bribery. At least with the oil executives. It's basically flat out bribery. And, and, and shameless too. So even more crimes that he's committing here. But um, looking at these CEOs here. Um, give me a, a vibe on what their meeting was like with him. And then we'll follow it up with... Um, how did that change their opinion of Donald Trump after uh, meeting with him? Okay, entertainment purposes only. What was the vibe of meeting with Donald Trump? Foundation of the reading, we have the devil card. 
Um, yeah, he's basically shown himself for who he is. You know, there's just there's no two ways about it. If if you are voting and supporting Donald Trump, you know exactly what you're getting. And <laughs> crossed with the King of Swords. And it's time for these CEOs to really make a choice here of <clears throat> what America do they want to live in? Do they want to live in a democracy or do they want to live in an oligarchy? Where they're the oligarchs, and that's a great role to be in, but understand that you are, they understand they would be flushing democracy down the toilet. Underneath it all is the Knight of Cups. Time for them to decide, is he friend or foe? This could be the false friend, but you know, they have to decide though, is Donald Trump friend or foe? And how are we going to do this? In the past, you got the Seven of Wands. Um, some of these uh, CEOs, you know, they understand Trump's a businessman and he, you know, you're wheeling and dealing and stuff like that. But part of the problem is, is that Trump doesn't keep all his promises. You know, he'll certainly, if he does anything that he promised you, he says you owe him. He fought for you, now you owe him. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter how much you pay him back. You always owe him. He's the devil. The minute you make an agreement with him, the devil owns your soul. So no matter what little things he does for you, he thinks he owns your soul. It's the energy with these CEOs. Current situation. The stuff he was offering them wasn't really interesting him. Because there's no plan. There's no growth. Where's where's the growth here? What's going to, you know, de just deregulating it? What are you going to deregulate? What's the plan? How can I plan for whatever it is you're offering me if you're not specific with the details? They want the details. What Trump offered them is just like more of the same. It's kind of boring to them. Overarching energy is the Eight of Swords. Yeah, I mean, they don't want to tie themselves to Trump. He's not being specific. He's rambling. Honestly, the vibe I get from this card here. <laughs> Trump the salesman. Trump the great real estate guy is basically now got these guys locked in like they're in a timeshare seminar for four hours. <laughs> and when they get out, what are they going to get? You know, uh, a complimentary uh, dinner at Mar-a-Lago. Come on down. <laughs> we'll charge you 5000 bucks to get in. Another 5000 for a round of golf. But hey, try the, try the prawn cocktail. It's amazing. <laughs> They were trapped. They were trapped in there like a timeshare sales bitch. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy. <laughs> the lesson to be learned. Hey, he's a disappointment. <laughs> he's an emotional wreck. They can't believe that they got stuck in the timeshare thing. He kept trying to sell them timeshares. <laughs> But have you ever considered a timeshare? <laughs> They're gonna hold on to their money. Oh, I, you know, he might get he might get some donations just so that they can say they donated him as an insurance policy in case he gets elected. But. They they're gonna go back and just work and make their money. They they're not counting on him. Uh, delivering on his promises much less do they really think the timeshare is going to be the thing that's going to bring them happiness and joy in this world <laughs> oh wouldn't that be like him though wouldn't that be like him to be hawking timeshares that's like perfect that that is the perfect thing for him that's what he should have been doing all this time <coughs> the king of timeshares <laughs> Telling you something you don't want and you can't easily get out of. Oh, it's terrible. Okay. Oh, more. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so I, I, I think I know the answer to this next throw, but let's do it anyways, because maybe we'll get some more timeshare answers here. Uh, these CEOs that left, um, are they going to be uh, putting their heart and souls behind Donald Trump here? <laughs> How many of them are going to buy the timeshares that he was offering? <laughs> oh, Page of Pentacles. Yeah, they'll give him a little bit of money. Just to, uh, yeah, they'll give him a little bit of money to cover their bases. <laughs> yeah, because you never know. You know, for these companies, you know that one percent, that one percent uh, tax break. Oh, that's going to be a huge difference. Not really. Actually, it would be a lot of money, believe it or not. But it, that's not enough to really sway him. Yeah, they'll throw some money his way because, you know, he's in government. But they know who he is. They know that he's lying. They know he won't follow through with things. But, you know, it's better to offer a tribute to the devil here because who knows? Maybe you'll get that great Vegas uh, timeshare that you've always wanted. In the past, you got temperance. Yeah. Um, you just... They dealt with Trump. He, they know he's crazy. They know his plans don't work. But you try and maneuver things as best you can so that you get some benefit out of the timeshare proposal. Current situation, eight of coins. They're more worried about the economy and making profits than they are about these tax cuts here. Um, yeah, that whole supply chain thing and stuff like that, they've been making record profits. I think they're a little more concerned about what the government's going to do about their record profits than they are about what Trump's going to do with deregulation. Overarching energy is the Queen of Cups. They're not going to they're not going to come out spouting uh, the the wonders of Donald Trump. They they know better because they still have to deal with the Biden government. The lesson to be learned is the Nine of Coins. They're still going to be wealthy when they come out of this. There's nothing Trump offered them that is going to make them want to uh, to <coughs> rock the boat, as it were. They're going to be fine with their companies. <coughs> Outcome is the strength card. Yeah, their companies are fine. There's nothing Donald Trump offered them. It was all small potatoes. Yeah, yeah. will they throw some money his way? Sure. It costs them very little to do that, and they're just covering their bases. <sighs> In this case, the devil doesn't really own their soul, <laughs> and they're not about to give him the opportunity. <laughs> A timeshare on the ninth plane of hell, or Las Vegas. <laughs> Given some of the summer temperatures they've had, it might be warm enough. Now, doesn't that strike you as odd or funny or humorous or ironic? Ironic's the word. That, you know, Donald Trump's having an outdoor rally in the desert. <laughs> and it's hot as all get out. It's like in the bunch, nothing but a bunch of Trumpers are out there. You'd think they'd see the irony of, yeah, this is kind of what the plains of hell are like, but only hotter. <laughs> Why are you why are you passing out? This is the path you're going down, right? This is what you want, right? Or the orange dude in front of you and it's hot and fiery outside. But that's okay. You're you're a good Christian and you're owning the libs. So, what did we get away from what did we get from all this? Uh, Trump's going to promise folks CEO stuff and they just like shake their head like, oh my God, <laughs> I can't believe I just got suckered into a timeshare presentation. <laughs> Get me out of here. I'll throw 50 bucks in his campaign. I'll throw the, like the maximum $3,000 or whatever it is and just wash our hands of it. All right, we'll leave it here. Thank you very much for watching this timeshare presentation. <laughs> if you like this video, um, uh, leave a comment, uh, give it a thumbs up, feed the algorithm so it makes it out to a wider audience so that folks who uh, it might make it out to people who need a good laugh about timeshares. And my family secret, my dad got stung by timeshares and we're still trying to get out from underneath it. It's such a mess. He was such a smart man. I don't understand why he fell for this. Ugh. But anyway, that's my own personal thing I have to deal with. Um... Thank you for your, uh, again, thank you for all the support on this channel. I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.